so that we might receive adoption as sons. It would be enough if we just missed hell. Amen? But he does this so that we might receive adoption as sons. In other words, Christ, the eternal son of God, wraps himself in flesh, clothes himself in humanity so that he, as the son, can redeem us, pay for our sin, reconcile us to God, not just so that we miss hell, so that we too can be adopted as sons. First of all, this Jesus is not just a baby in a manger. The baby's in the manger for a purpose. And the baby's in the manger because we are all guilty and alienated from God. And the baby's in the manger because it is only through the baby in the manger who grows up, lives a perfect life, dies a substitutionary atoning death on the cross, raises again on the third day, ascends to the right hand of the Father where he ever makes intercession for us. It is only through that that we can actually become sons and daughters of God. I don't, I don't want to be overly technical and I'm not trying to get messy. But if we're all God's children, I'm not understanding something here. My wife and I have children who, who came into our family biologically, and we have children who came into our family through adoption. And the ones who came into our family through adoption became our children and they had to become our children because before they were adopted they were not our children so if Christ came to redeem those who were under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons then that means that we were not sons or we are not sons prior to that adoption. And not only are we not sons, but we're enemies. Rightly deserving the wrath of God. And that may sound ugly, and it is. In fact, it's uglier than it sounds. But it's only when you understand the ugliness of that that you understand the beauty of our adoption in Christ. Jesus is God with us so that we might be with God. Verse 6, and because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. By the way, just like we heard earlier, do, do you see the Trinity here? First, we see the Father in the fullness of Time had come, God sent forth his son. Then we see the son. Now we see what the son does. Verse six, and because you are sons, God sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts crying, Abba, Father. We're in that one verse, we get all three, but in the whole of this passage, we get all three persons of the Trinity. The triune God working this out, saving us and adopting us. So you are no longer a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. Without God sending forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who are under the law, then Christ pays for his own sin at the cross and thereafter in hell, eternally separated from God, and he has no redemption to offer you and me. But 
but because he is the God-man. Because he is God with us. He is innocent of Adam's sin. Because he is the God-man, he can represent those of us who inherit Adam's sin. And because he is the God-man, he can keep the whole law for his people and suffer the punishment due to their sin. And because of the beauty of this, we can be adopted. Listen to this. From our confession, Second London Baptist Confession of 1689. Adoption, the forgotten step in the order salutis. Everybody talks about, you know, justified, sanctified, glorified. You're missing a step, and it's an important one. We're justified, adopted, sanctified, and glorified. Listen to this, just one paragraph in the confession. God has granted that all those who are justified would receive the grace of adoption in and for the sake of his only son, Jesus Christ. In and for the sake of his only son, Jesus Christ. My adoption is not only contingent upon, but it is because of and for the sake of his only son, Jesus Christ. By this, they are counted among the children of God, and they enjoy the freedom and privileges of that relationship. They inherit his name, receive the spirit of adoption, have access to the throne of grace with boldness, and are enabled to cry, Abba, Father. They are given compassion, protected, provided for, and chastened by him as a father, yet they are never cast off but are sealed for the day of redemption and inherit the promises as heirs of everlasting salvation. That's what we get from God with us. And that's why it matters that Christ is God with us. That's why it's not enough for him to be good man, good teacher, good prophet. Because there is no salvation in good man. There is no salvation in good teacher. There is no salvation in good prophet unless that good man who was a good teacher and a good prophet was also God with us.